this is how you can use ChatGPT to learn cybersecurity as a complete beginner. So for those of you who are staying on top of the news with ChatGPT and all the changes that it's making in the tech career space, I'm sure you've seen lots of videos sharing how you can actually use ChatGPT to your advantage by learning a new skill or asking the right questions and having it share the answers that you want. I've already made a video on how I think ChatGPT is going to affect the entire cybersecurity field in terms of careers, but today's video will be specifically on how to use it as a learning tool as a beginner, especially to your advantage because you're currently able to use this resource for free and you should definitely want to take advantage of it. So just a very brief intro, ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence chatbot created by OpenAI and is currently in the news for many different things, but this is arguably one of the most powerful chatbots that has been released for public use and that is why so many people are taking advantage of it from being able to use it to fix your code to having it teach you in a certain way based on experience level, as well as of course just answering questions with information that it has dated prior to 2021. Alright, so now I'm going to share my screen and show you how I would use ChatGPT to learn cybersecurity as a complete beginner with no experience. Alright, so currently as you can see here, I have ChatGPT loaded up on my browser. Anyone can create an account on ChatGPT using a Google login or just by creating an account. Now there is ChatGPT Plus, which gives you access to a more advanced model of ChatGPT, aka ChatGPT4. Of course, it's up to you if you want to pay for that subscription, but currently I'm using the free version. So when you're just getting started, you do have some examples and capabilities listed out on here. They also give you some warnings. All right, so first things first, let's just start with something very basic. If someone was just getting started with cybersecurity, I asked ChatGPT what I should learn or focus on as a beginner in cybersecurity, specifically with the core goal to find a job. And you see it generating a few things that you should focus on or likely the skills or roles that companies are primarily looking for. Personally, this is one of the biggest reasons why I'm a big fan of ChatGPT. I know there's a lot of doomsday language out there and articles about how this is going to negatively impact society, which I'm sure could be the case if you used in the wrong ways and in the wrong hands, but I also think that it provides a lot of opportunity, especially to be used as a free resource. All right, so looking at its answers, you can see it shared a few key areas to focus on, which is exactly what we're looking for. So networking fundamentals, definitely agree. Operating systems, cybersecurity principles, CIA triad, threat modeling, risk assessments, uh, security tooling, antivirus software, IDS, IPS, firewalls, and vulnerability scanners, ethical hacking, cyber forensics, and security certifications. A cybersecurity certification isn't necessarily a skill area in cybersecurity, but it is, you know, something that maybe they pulled from a source like a job posting or multiple job postings that were looking for specific things. And of course, having a cybersecurity certification is a great way to set yourself a cut above the rest if you're currently in the job market. In addition to technical skills, they also mention excellent communication skills, the ability to work in a team. So for those of you who are looking to get started in a career in cybersecurity, I'd recommend checking out the Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity. The Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity is one of the world's top cybersecurity programs with an average of 100 plus enrollments in every batch. Simply Learn has built the program in collaboration with MIT, Schwarzman College of Computing, and EC Council. This postgraduate program in cybersecurity is designed to equip you with the skills required to become an expert in the rapidly growing field of cybersecurity, and the program duration is for six months. It was also chosen as the best cybersecurity program in 2022 by Course Report. And I think one of the most important things to call out here is cybersecurity industry trends. Based on cyber ventures, by 2026, there will be 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs internationally with 700,000 available job roles today and the average annual salary of about $100,000 per year. This is also one of the reasons why I think cybersecurity is such a good career to go into, especially because joining a program like this will be able to help you kickstart your career in just a few months where you can come in as a complete beginner and leave with a completed certification with a real hands-on experience, learning foundational cybersecurity concepts, working on hands-on projects, and have a much higher learning potential than most roles in and outside of tech as an entry-level beginner. They also have various different learner reviews listed on their platform with roles in security architecture and tech consulting. There's no prior experience required to enroll in this course and any graduate can enroll in this program. The program leverages MIT's academic excellence in cybersecurity and provides a comprehensive understanding of the field with various different courses featuring modules from the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing and EC Council, as well as master classes from MIT faculty. You'll have a chance to work on 25 hands-on projects as well as have access to modules from EC Council and have access to CEH learning material. The top alumni from Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity include Google, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, LinkedIn, JP Morgan. At the end of this program, you'll also receive an EC Council learning kit and exam voucher, as well as six months free access to CHI Labs, plus 25 hacking challenges from the EC Council that'll give you really good experience as someone who is just getting started in cybersecurity. Skills covered include ethical hacking, risk management, advanced hacking concepts, as well as mobile and web technologies. You can check out their admissions process where you can pay via monthly installment with various payment options with low APR and no hidden fees for as low as $264 a month. 
You can fill in your details to learn more about the program and speak directly with one of their career counselors to learn more about their admissions process and the program itself. So if you guys are interested in checking out the Simply Learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity, you can use my code Sandra10 for 10% off. You can also learn more about the program itself linked in my description below. Thank you to Simply Learn for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. So let's say you're someone who is a beginner and you want to focus specifically on ethical hacking. I think that's a good area to you know, get started in, especially if you're looking for maybe a junior princessing role or any kind of red teaming role, to be honest. And then you can follow up with this question and ask, what are the top skills to learn in ethical hacking? So I think another reason why ChatGPT is becoming so popular is the fact that you're able to talk to it like a chatbot, which is exactly what it is. Um, just being able to use it in a way where you're asking questions kind of like to a professor in class or to a mentor or someone who knows a lot about a certain area. That is the reason why ChatGPT has become much more popular because you're able to use it as a beginner and ask it questions and it'll formulate answers and you're also able to frame those answers in a way where you say as a beginner or as an expert. Basically, the language can be updated based on the level of experience that you have in the specific topic, which also makes learning a lot easier for those of you who may be on different levels, whether you're a beginner or intermediate. One thing to note is the fact that a lot of their answers are often very general, so it's also part of your job to take from it what is useful and maybe keep away the things that may not be as useful. So when I ask it for skills that may be relevant to ethical hackers, they do repeat a few things like networking, operating systems, which does make sense. But when you come down here, they do have some additional notes that they've added. For example, knowledge of programming languages like Python, C, C++, penetration testing tools, Nmap, Metasploit, Wireshark, Burp Suite, John the Ripper, definitely agree. Cryptography, understanding the basics like encryption, decryption, digital signatures, signatures, and certificates. So after asking a few questions to ChatGPT, you do kind of see the trend or the formula that they have for their answers. It's typically going to be some kind of list format. If you're asking a question for tell me XYZ skills or XYZ topics, and then it ends off with a little bit of like a closing paragraph, I would say, that tells you a few other things to focus on. So let's say you're a complete beginner and, and you want to learn how to use and map. Maybe you can ask, what are the most common use cases for Nmap. And by the way, Nmap is, is not just a powerful tool for red teaming or ethical hacking. It is also commonly used for various other roles in cybersecurity, including on the blue team side. For example, if you're someone who has a vulnerability report and you have this, and maybe there's a new asset that was scanned and it doesn't look familiar to you, you may run an Nmap scan on it to learn more about it, to see what the open ports are, etc. Okay, so it has a few answers for us. Nmap is a networking, exploration, and security auditing tool that can be used for a wide range of tasks. And they've also included seven of the most common uses. Network mapping, port scanning, vulnerability scanning, OS detection, firewall detection, version detection, and network traffic analysis. Overall, a very powerful tool can be used for many different things and, and is definitely a reason why Nmap is so popular. All right, so next thing you can see that I've asked it is to create a learning tutorial for Nmap to use as a beginner. Of course, you could go on the official website, look up their documentation, follow some steps, but because you have this AI chatbot that is able to directly find that information for you, make it into an easy to explain way for beginners. This actually makes learning a whole lot faster because you're able to streamline that process of you having to look for that information, having to double check certain things. And, and as you can see, the answers it spits out are very, very helpful. So it did create an eight step learning tutorial for you, specifically for Nmap. And first things first, install Nmap, of course, it tells you exactly where to download it, available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And then it tells you how to do a basic scan. So open the command line prompt, type Nmap, followed by, followed by an IP address. There are test sites that you can use out there like DVWA, but I believe Nmap also has its own test website that you can use so you can scan that directly. So they tell you how to do a basic scan, what commands to run, what will happen after you run that command and what you can expect to see. And then it also tells you how to scan a range of IP addresses, the version of services running on a target system, OS detection, port scanning options, and that can definitely be very fine tuned. So I'm sure there are many advanced tutorials that you can have that you can have ChatGPT create for you. But because this is a very beginner tutorial that we've asked for, the main things it's going to share with you are more common ways that Nmap is going to be used. They've also shared some examples, some examples on output formats, as well as potentially writing some custom scripts of your own for more advanced scans. So as you can see, just based on where we started of teach me cybersecurity as a beginner to can I learn more about ethical hacking to focusing on a specific tool that is used by ethical hackers and other cybersecurity professionals like Nmap, you can see that ChatGPT has is able to give you responses so much faster than you going to the official documentation of a tool or an application or whatever that you're learning and being able to use that to learn the skills that you need to learn 
at a much faster pace than if you were just learning from a typical tutorial or or from the documentation itself and what's also helpful about this is the fact that you can learn at your own pace and can go as in-depth or as high level as you're looking for so now let's ask you a question pertaining to what specific tools that cybersecurity companies are looking for. I would say skills, but if you say skills, it will probably give you a general list of skills like vulnerability management, networking, kind of like what we've seen. So let's say as a cybersecurity analyst this time, tools may or may not be the best word here, but as you can see, every time I use ChatGPT, I am usually thoroughly impressed by their answers, um, especially if you're able to ask it very specific questions. Obviously, I'm not one of those people who are building queries for ChatGPT and making it you know, very, very specific. I know there are a lot of even courses nowadays on how to properly use ChatGPT to get it the exact answers that you want. But personally, I'm using it as a pretty typical user. All right, so let's see what they have here. We've asked it, what are the top tools that companies are hiring for as a cybersecurity analyst? So now they've given us a list of a few tools that companies are hiring for, for cybersecurity professionals or cybersecurity analysts. So specifically SIEM tools, what I was actually looking for was specifically the names of these tools, which is something that I think is really important that they've actually shared with us. Vulnerability scanners, Nessus, Qualys, Rapid7, network monitoring tools, SolarWinds, Wireshark, Nagios, Endpoint Protection, Semantic, McPhee, Carbon Black, penetration testing tools, which we've already seen a little bit of from our ethical hacking questions, Metasploit, and Map and Burp Suite, and then incident response tools, IBM Resilience, FireEye, and Splunk. So honestly, I think this is a pretty good list. Obviously, the exact tooling depends on the company they're applying for, but this also gives you an idea of what things that you could be keeping an eye on or at least doing some background research on, especially for the popular tools like many of these listed on this list. If you're working for an employer, they're likely using some of these tools, at least one of them, if they have a relatively mature cybersecurity program. So of course, a lot of these are tools that you have to pay for for a subscription. So let's ask it maybe if they can provide a list of open source tools. This may also give you an idea of other tools that you can use specifically in cybersecurity that, that may not need you to pay for a license to use them because cybersecurity is well known for a lot of open source tooling. So I do think you should take advantage of that, especially if you're someone who is just starting out, maybe you Maybe you don't want to pay for a license to learn a specific tool and that completely makes sense. So let's see what they have given us. Okay, so they've provided us a list of common tools. And I think the keyword here is specifically that companies are looking to hire cybersecurity analysts because this is an important thing, obviously, we want to look at when you're looking for skills and tools that you're learning. I'm not saying that you only want to focus on tooling that companies are going to hire for, but it does make your life a whole lot easier if companies, if you're learning a tool that you're interested in, but companies also want to hire for that specific tool, someone who may be a subject matter expert in it or have used it in a previous capacity. So looking here, they've listed Snort, OSEC, OpenVAS, Nmap, Security Onion, and Metasploit which of course is very popular. So just going through some of these answers that we've seen from ChatGPT, I hope this gives you an understanding of what you can do with the tool and how you can use it to learn. In fact, even something like, so I've asked ChatGPT to create me a four month study guide for the CompTIA Security Plus exam. Obviously very broad. You can definitely make it as detailed as you want. You can probably even ask it to go over certain topics in certain weeks. If you want to tell it the pace of your learning. Personally, if I had a tool like this when I was just getting started studying for my Security Plus, that would have been really, really awesome. And I did say four months because that's about how long it took me, about three or four months to study for my Security Plus certification while I was working full time. So I do think two to four months is probably a good sweet spot for the Security Plus. So they've given you a itinerary of what to do during your month of studying. So month one, month two, month three, and month four. So based on their answer, it looks like they've cut up the different areas or, or learning objectives in the exam guide itself to put into different weeks of the certification, of studying for the certification. So week one, getting familiar with exam objectives, huge proponent of following the exam objectives guide that CompTIA actually releases for free, studying the concepts of cybersecurity. These are probably the fundamentals in the first few chapters, network security concepts, threats and attacks, types of vulnerabilities and mitigations, different types of security for the different types of technologies, types of security controls and implementation. And then lastly, practice exam simulations and review. All right, so as you can see, ChatGPT is a very powerful tool that you can use as part of your learning as a cybersecurity professional, especially because you're able to ask a question at a beginner level where it can give you answers that aren't as technical or may not be as or may not be as advanced as you would typically see from official documentation. And it also makes it easier to understand when you're just getting started from scratch and may not have any previous experience in cybersecurity. So hopefully this video gave you an idea of how to use ChatGPT in a learning capacity as a cybersecurity beginner. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Also, let me know what 
you guys think about ChatGPT, using it as a learning tool, if you've already used it before and how it's been able to help you or or maybe if you even had some negative experiences with it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.